but, but if you're stuck and you okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the board uh, will reconvene. We actually met uh, this evening at, uh, we opened our meeting at 6 p.m. Uh, for an executive session, as I announced, oh, over a month ago that uh, we are working with uh, council on uh, 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 bargaining units and things like that. And so we do have a meeting posted at 6 o'clock every week, as you notice. And then if there's nothing to go over, uh, and I don't hear from our representatives, Mrs. Winslow and Mrs. Begley, or the, or the uh, town attorney, then uh, I just cancel those on Friday. So uh, that's why sometimes on Tuesdays you show up and we're five minutes late like tonight. So we've already opened the meeting. Uh, Mrs. Winslow was present at the meeting. Uh, she had a medical issue. She had to leave. She may be back. Um, and so we will begin with announcements. And Mrs. Begley was appointed as the uh, clerk pro tem. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a number of announcements. Um, on Sunday, October 7th, from 2 to 7 p.m., Redmond's Hall Dance for Life to Benefit Jeremiah Jeffers. Um, for $10, contact um, Paula Barros at 508-944-5392. And donations are to Jeremiah Jeffers um, Fund at Eastern Bank. Number two is Wareham High School Middle School PTA Comedy Night on October 12th at Salerno's at 7 p.m. Must be 21. Tickets are $25. Contact Chris or Rhonda. Um, Chris is 781-588-8200 or Rhonda, 508-295-7431. The YMCA Murder Mystery to Raise Funds for the Y, um, y Cares Animal Support Fund. On October 19th at Marion Music Hall, 6 to 9 p.m. Tickets are $50 in advance, $55 at the door. Contact Joanne Watson at 508-295-9622, extension 15. The Boys and Girls Club Flea Market on October 13th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Vendor space is available. Call 508-295-5400. The Onset Foursquare Church is seeking volunteers to decorate their cars for the second annual Trunk or Treat event to be held on Halloween. October 31st, 5 to 7 p.m. The deadline to apply is October 12th. Call 508-291-1595. And October is Spooky Month at the library. Um, tomorrow on the 3rd at Spinney, 7 p.m., Linda Ames, the author in the dark woods of Wareham, Murder of the Eggman. On October 11th at the main library, 7 p.m., Tim Weisberg, author, Ghosts of the South Coast. October 18th at the main library at 3 p.m. Kids um, 12 and over for zombie invasion. Oh, that's lovely. Call Laurie Cavanaugh, 508-295-2343 at extension 1012. At 6 p.m., David Mello, Tales Told in the Dark. On the 23rd on uh, main library, 630, kid-friendly spooky story nights. The 27th at the main library at 330, same thing. Kid-Friendly Spooky um, Story Nights and Crafts, and on the 30th um, on, at the Main Library at 6.30, Halloween Recital, Musical Trick or Treat, and Town Meeting Preview on Thursday, October 4th, 2012, at 7 p.m., Dudley Brown VFW, presented by the Onset Protective League and Town Moderator Claire Smith, and ref light refreshments will be served. Anyone else? Oh, one more thing. Coffee Hour tomorrow at 9 a.m., at the multi-service center in room 225. Um, Nancy Miller will be there um, representing the cemetery commissioners and the article for town meeting. Mr. Teitelbaum? Uh, no announcements, thank you. Mr. Slavin? No announcements. Mr. Holmes, anything? Uh, yeah, I have one thing. I'm going to read from my phone, if you don't mind. I printed this off and wasted a piece of paper. I didn't bring it with me. But if I don't read this, Mrs. Smith will uh, give me a stick in the backyard. Uh, it says here, uh, I was hoping to get back into town in time for your meeting tonight under citizens participation. Uh, make a request that anyone having handouts 
flyers, or information they wish to place outside of the town meeting hall during town meeting needs to have a copy uh, to the moderator mm -hmm. for my review at least seven days before town meeting. They can either email it to me via the town moderator email, which is moderator.ma.us. However, I don't think I would be back in time um, your meeting begin so if I'm not at your meeting would you please make this announcement <laughs> also uh, if the company <laughs> rich she might be talking about you here um, but I would make this point to anyone uh, who has Warren dr. Rabinovich I'm sure and Jeff uh, you guys already know this uh, if you have a presentation um, to make it town meeting right uh, you have any uh, pres PowerPoint presentations and slides they wish to show at town meeting they will need to be sent to me as well as to Matt Underhill uh, so rich in your case you don't know any of these people right you can just email it to me and I'll get it to them in time for you or Derek we'll make sure they get it um, in time uh, because those have to be put on his stick so he's loaded up uh, for the night of town meeting Please alert them to the fact that as well as also if any that if town meeting votes only to give proponents five minutes for a presentation they need to know that in advance that is only that is the only amount of time they will have so you need to keep it short uh, if you could relay that to them it would be helpful and then it says uh, going on it says Steve if you're going to be given the report on the Westfield study keep in mind that you will only have also only have five minutes for your report if the body votes to allow proponents only five minutes or gives you uh, more time, uh, if you have any handouts, flyers, slides, you also need to get them to me seven days in advance. Thank you, Claire. Claire is the moderator of town meeting. Um, and the other thing I would note, because we do have some out of town folks uh, presenting, that uh, I believe town meeting we'll need to have somebody say, Rich, it's okay for you to talk, and we'll t we'll take care of that for you. So that's the uh, announcement from the moderator, governing town meeting. All right. Next item on the agenda, Mr. Chair, is citizens' participation. Anyone would like to speak before the board this evening? Sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Morrow. My wife, Rosalind. We live at 813th Street, Nonset. Been a homeowner there since 1989. I have sent letters, talked to people at town hall of zoning issue problems. Um, it goes back to April. I first went down to open up the home. It was a storage bin there, 40 footer. This is an on onset village residential. Okay. I came back two weeks later because the weather was cold. There were two 40 footers, nine feet tall, probably eight or nine feet wide. Um, I went to the town hall, newly retired, sit there and look at these gray buildings all day, not too happy. Went over to the inspectional services department. I talked to administrator, Mr. Andrews, who I guess has left. I talked to Mr. Burke, who I guess has left. I talked to Mr. Foster, who was intern town manager for a while. He said they should get it straightened out. We got a new building inspector coming. I wrote letters to Mr. Sullivan. I wrote letters to you people. As you can see, it's stamped. I last letter I wrote, I even put down all the violations from Onset Village residential notification, the rules and regulations. I also noted that in that area, there's a live electric box, which is a construction box, which is, to my knowledge, and I believe to the Massachusetts code under 40, it's only 90 days. Kids in the neighborhood can stick stuff in the thing and get electrocuted. But back to the storage buildings. 
as I said before, this is onset residential, not business. It's in the village. If you look up the village number 358, under the zoning laws, these buildings are not allowed. Under section 321, use the table of use and definitions, not allowed. If you look under the violations, under 1431, 1431.1, 1431.2, and 1431.2, there also could be penalties which can be served to this at $300 a day. If the town needs money, maybe that's where they should get some. I moved there because it was a residential district, not a business district. This fellow's running a business out of there. People tell me, oh, well, that can't be done. This can't be done. Well, what are we going to do about it? I wrote you a letter which is supposed to be responded according to MGL, which is the Massachusetts General Laws, 40A. You've got 10 days to respond to me. Your 10 days are up. What do you recommend me to do? I understand you don't have a zoning commission. Does that mean if, hope it doesn't happen, the police chief or the fire chief leave, we don't send the trucks out or the, or the police cars out because the boss left? What does that mean? I don't know. What do you want me to do? I'm going to leave it in your hands. I've given you 10 days. I haven't received anything. I call. I go. I'm back and forth to town hall. People see me there all the time. I even gave you a letter of this in August 2nd and I get no response. I gave you another one on September 17th. Here we are into October. I don't understand. If you have a zoning issue, let's get it straightened out. Is this on, excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Is this on that list? Was this on the list of For zoning? what the, the new guy needs to take care of, okay. yes. Is he started? He has started as of this morning. Okay, good. He has started what? As of this morning, we now, that's part of the TA report there, but we now have a building inspector. The local building inspector could not do that under Mass General Law. That is true. Uh, so we now yes. have, I have hired somebody yep. to take care of these matters. Okay, uh, this should be the first one on the docket. This goes back to August uh, the, sir, of your there, notification. I, I appreciate that, and there's, yep. there's others out there, and that's why I've brought uh -huh. this gentleman in to take care of these matters. When did he start? Today? Today. Very good. So what am I supposed to do now? So, I so I'm paying taxes I, I in just, the residential district. I just wanted to make sure that yeah. that, that was, Mr. Sullivan's been working on that for a few weeks to get that cleared up because we didn't want anybody signing off on these types of documents that no. were not certified yeah. and qualified. So uh, he's rectified that situation for now. Right. And I would say that give it, if you would be so kind, yeah. As to give us a week. Uh, is the to town getting penalty payments for this? It's penalty payments for what? For the zoning violation law? Oh, sir. I, I, it's $300 I, I, a day. I don't, I don't. Well, the town needs money. Am I correct? Yeah, we, we do need money, right? We absolutely need money. Okay. So do does that mean that you can just go and break a zoning law and not get well, fined no, sir. for it? Yes, sir, no. Okay. No. All right. No. I mean... So why do you have the three hundred dollars? We need in there? to have we need to have the zoning <laughs> officer look at it and then give us the ruling and then the board will deal with it. The ruling Sir. is right here. Well, okay. Zoning fourteen thirty two. Your own zoning law is right here. That's the ruling. And, and I didn't make that ruling. I understand that. Okay. I understand that. Right. And our zoning officer will tell us okay. what that story is. Okay. So okay. My I appreciate you telling us, but we have yep. to have it from Go ahead. Uh, somebody. You appreciate my tax money too. We do. Thank yes, you. Yes, you do. Thank you. Residential tax money. Right. Okay. I, so I am know, I going to hear in a I day know or what two you're saying. or three months? Mr. Chair. Because I, I want to know because I'm going to go further with this if not. That's okay. okay. You, you don't need to threaten. I'm not threatening you. Don't you don't need to threaten me. No, I I'm mean, not. I'm trying to get the answer for you. Okay. If you just. Go ahead. What's your answer? How much time? Sir. Yes, sir. I'm not going to give you a definitive answer on there. Okay. I'm going to tell you mm -hmm. that he will work on it. It is on the list. There are others on there. Okay. And I'm not going to give you okay. a definitive time on that. Okay. Thank you very much. Fair enough. I, uh, I hope the fines are going to go with it. Uh, Ma'am, you have to just identify yourself in the I'm mic. I sure, you can speak. With my husband. And uh, that storage units, they're owned by Dominic Camerano, who's 
serves on your finance committee. I just don't need to name names in public without someone being here, please. And I'm going to have, a, well, our zoning officer will take care of that. And I'm going to make a copy of this uh, and get it out to each of the board members. And Mr. Sullivan, you can keep, keep us posted on this on when he gets when he gets to this gentleman's properties, please. I will let you know that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, next, I saw another hand. Mr. White. Uh, lady, ma'am, and uh, gentlemen, I'm Bob White. I'm the uh, one of the coordinators for the Veterans Day activities this November 12th. Um, I may not have much to offer to you on every occasion, but I want to be here to make sure that the the notice keeps going out. We're planning a parade, an appropriate ceremony, and a luncheon, all of which is a representation of the momentum this is, that this town has. Uh, the purpose is to celebrate veteran service and veterans' presence in our midst. This opportunity exists to incorporate young people in the process so that we don't lose sight of where this heritage has been, where it's come from, and how we are going to pass it on to another generation. So we're making a major effort to include young people and a wide variety of organizations within the town as well as incorporate the efforts of many folks who cook and like to present their food to others. So there are plenty of places to volunteer. Uh, the number that we use for that is my telephone, which is 508-274-4963. And the website or the, the email address is wrcw at verizon.net. What I gave to the uh, chairman tonight should be in your email uh, when you get home. Did you email this to the board? It was emailed to the board. I wanted to be sure you had a copy of it, a uh, hard copy. Most of the, my off time these days is spent soliciting people to participate in the parade. This is a, an opportunity to get out and celebrate, to march in the parade, wave a flag, and be part of a larger community gathering. Uh, we're inter encouraging floats with a patriotic theme, marching units, um, military units with equipment, with color guards, etc. And I know that as soon as you have a chance to digest all of this, you people will be at the top of my list of volunteers. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here. And thank, thank you. you for the, the uh, notice on the Wareham Coffee Hour, which happens on Thursday. Did yep. I say tomorrow? I, I think tomorrow, you did, did say tomorrow. I Sorry, everybody, if I said tomorrow, it's Thursday at 9. Thursday at 9. Sorry. Welcome, all of you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Bob. Mr. Chairman, uh, and just one quick thing. I would ask that maybe we put Mr. White on the schedule for the next three or four weeks till we get to November so we keep, keep abreast of what's going on. I was just going to ask on. that if it would be on weekly. He can uh, It'd be a lot better than doing he's citizen. He's come every week. He's here. Uh, if you want to be on the agenda, I'll put you on the agenda. It's up to you. That's good. If we what you doing, what so you're doing is fine. You may want to show up tomorrow to redirect people <laughs> from your coffee hour. Um, I saw another hand. Mr. Barrows? Yeah, I'm Gerald Barrows. Yes, and, Mr. Barrows. Uh, I applaud what Mr. White is doing, but I feel insulted. Why? Because the Veterans Day is November 11th, yeah, not why? the 12th. We talked about that, this last week with him. And that's supposed to be celebrated on the 11th, not the 12th. Yeah. I'm a veteran, yes. I did my duty and everything, but I feel insulted when you do it on another day. That's not the day it's supposed to be. Just like they're changing all these days. The president, they're making one day for all presidents. Were they born all, all in one day? No, sir. I feel insulted. Um, um, uh, as you recall last week, Mr. White brought we brought that up with Mr. White and it was the the committee Mr. White why don't you come back if you don't mind 
Because it is an important issue to a lot of veterans, and it was raised. Um, but Mr. White, or none of us made that decision. Would you, would you address that, if you would, please? It was a source of great discussion because we didn't want to offend the veterans or anyone else who uh, preferred to have it on the 11th. But it is the federal holiday, according to the federal calendar. And we did not want to conflict with people who needed to uh, continue their religious ex experience on Sunday. Uh, since this is a community-wide effort, we didn't want to cause another tension in the community with having done that. So maybe next year, I don't even, I haven't looked at the calendar, maybe it'll be on the 11th and it'll be on an appropriate day. But this year, the committee decided to hold it on the 12th. It was, a, Thank it was you. about a three month discussion. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay. Moving right along. That moves us to number five, um, consent agenda. There are no bills, but is this an appropriate time, Mr. Chair, to read the um, recognition for John Kendrick? Yeah, that would work. From the town of Wareham, in recognition of Wareham resident and American explorer John Kendrick. Whereas John Kendrick was born in East Harwich in 1740 and resided in Wareham from 1778 to 1787. And whereas during the American Revolution, he because a, um, a, a charismatic captain of privateers and used part of the prize money granted to him by King Louis XVI of France to build the first public school in Wareham, Massachusetts, where he resided with his wife, Hulda Pease Kendrick, and six children. And whereas John Kendrick was known to Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and other leaders of the age. And whereas John Kendrick was selected to be the commander of America's first expedition into the Pacific, which set sail from Boston on October 1, 1787, with a mission to establish the first American outposts on the Pacific, discover the Northwest Passage, and open a new trade in furs between the Northwest Coast and China. And whereas for five years, John Kendrick waged a one-ship campaign to hold off British and Spanish um, domination of the Northwest Coast and the strategic Hawaiian island. And whereas John Kendrick and his crew survived typhoons, illnesses, attacks, and carried the American flag to the closed nation of Japan. And whereas Kendrick developed alliances with native people, and a dozen years before Lewis and Clark set out on their historic journey westward, purchased lands and set copies of deeds for more than 1,000 square miles of what would become Vancouver Island to Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson. And whereas Kendrick's voyage opened a gateway into the Pacific for American merchant ships and whalers who followed and who regarded him as the first American to burst forth into that region, teaching others how to navigate its vast reaches. And whereas John Kendrick was killed by British cannon fire that was, I think, assaulting him in Honolulu in December, oh, I hope not saluting him in Honolulu on December 12th, 1794. And many of his papers were scattered and lost until recently, and his story lay buried in archives. Now, therefore, let the town of Wareham recognize its forgotten son as a master navigator, skilled frontier diplomat, and daring explorer, who broadened the world's horizon for all Americans and helped to shape the course of American history in the West and the Pacific. Let also be resolved that October 1st, 2012 be declared John Kendrick Day in memory of this illustrious captain who left his family and home port never to return. S signed, the Wareham Board of Selectmen, Stephen M. Holmes, Chairman, Kara in Winslow, Clerk, Ellen M. Begley, Alan H. Slavin, and Peter W. Teitelbaum. Uh, we also have a, uh, a proclamation from the uh, Massachusetts uh, State Senate. I'll give that to Mrs. Begley. Go right ahead. I may need yeah, water. It's a wonderful day <laughs> for okay. Captain Kendrick. Oh, it's the same thing. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. You could just note that it's from the Senate without reading this the This is thing. The from the time. Massachusetts Senate resolutions in recognition of the daring American explorer and revolu revolutionary war patriot John Kendrick. And this was signed, um, adopted September 27, 2012, and signed by mm -hmm. Therese Murray, President of the Senate. Um, William Welch, Clerk of the Senate, offered by Senator Daniel Wolf, and signed by Senator Mark Pacheco. And this one, uh, Mrs. Begley, you should probably read. This is the proclamation Let from uh, Governor Patrick, uh, commemorating the day. Right. Okay. What? 
press this back? Okay. Oh, nice. This is Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation, His Excellency Governor Deval L. Patrick. Whereas on October 1st, 1787, do you want me to read the whole thing, Mr. Chair? Yeah, I think that one is, uh, that's where he commemorates the day, so I think that's worth <laughs> Okay, reading. next time you're gonna be clerk. Now, whereas on October 1st, 1787, the ship known as Columbia Rediviva, along with its sloop Lady Washington, embarked on a journey that would lead the crew around the world. And whereas the Columbia expedition led by Captain John Kendrick, a native of Wareham and Harwich, sought to open new trade routes and revive the local economy by establishing the first American outposts on the Pacific, discover the Northwest Passage and open a new trade in furs between the Northwest Coast and China. And whereas the expedition, which left from Boston Harbor, traveled to Cape Verde, the Falkland Islands, Cape Horn, and around the Pacific Northwest. And whereas the voyage opened up trade routes and became the gateway into the Pacific, and was regarded as the first crew to burst forth into that region, teaching other merchants and whalers how to navigate its vast reaches. And whereas on this day we mark the 225th anniversary of the Columbia Expedition and encourage residents of Massachusetts to celebrate this important event in the history of our country and our Commonwealth. Now therefore, I, Deval L. Patrick, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim October 1st, 2012, to be Columbia in Washington Day and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this 27th day of September in the year 2012 and of the independence of the United States of America, the 236th, by His Excellency Deval L. Patrick, Governor of the Commonwealth and William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the <coughs> Commonwealth. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Here, here. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on um, to. I do have. I do, yeah, I do have a uh, one that came in. <laughs> Is Miss K here? Bridget K. Come Who? on, come Who? up here for a second. You know, you almost missed this. I know. Uh, we got a request on Saturday. And the board doesn't meet next week because of the holiday. Mm -hmm. So you would have a, your reception would be in Low the trees key. somewhere. That wouldn't be good, would it? Mm -hmm. Oh, under uh, licenses and permits. So uh, here's the, uh, oh, you one. got it there. Mm -hmm. right. um, Miss, uh, Miss K, uh, K is requesting a one day look at license for her wedding reception. So would you like to introduce yourself and tell us tell us you're all excited and tell us what you're doing? <laughs> um, okay. Are you excited? I'm excited. You should be. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> my name is Bridget. Um, and the, well, we actually got married in August and we're having the reception um, on the 13th with our family and friends here. So we're Fantastic. looking forward to a party. Any questions from the board? Um, I, think, I think they handed out. You all got this packet, right? Questions? Tips? Tips are included There's in the back page. Tips in here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, perfect. If there's no other questions, I would entertain a motion. So I'm moved. Oh, I think I, I have to read, read it motion. into the record, actually. Um, no, I so. move to approve the one day um, liquor license to Bridget K for the wedding reception. Oh, where is it? I'm looking for the. At um, Box Mill Hall at AD Makepeace on October 13th, 2012, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Second. We have a motion made and second. Question? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? 4 0 0. You can pick that up. Congratulations, tomorrow. Mrs. K. Congratulations. You can swing by the office and see Shirley. You, is that the lady you went and see, Shirley? Yes. Yep. You can go by and see her tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. Mr. Chair, I believe that's the only license that we have that I've seen in the packet. And there's, are there any other permits? No, I don't believe so. Um, moves us on to sewer business. So FY13, the first half, sewer usage omitted commitment. Mr. Campeter. Good 
Good evening. Okay, any questions from the board? Mr. Tidebar. Uh What's the approximate dollar value that's out there? 18278 $18, Thank you for your specificity. <laughs> Mr. Slavin? No questions. Mrs. Begley? No questions. And that represented uh, about 50, was it 52 or 56 uh, customers? Right. Right. Okay. We have a motion, please. Um, I move this. I'm going to read this letter, um, Mr. Chair. Dear Mr. Foster, please accept this letter as the board's first half omitted commitment for FY13 sewer users fee in the amount of eighteen thousand two hundred seventy-eight dollars and forty-six cents per a vote of the board. Um, so so moved. Second. Second. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Abstain four zero zero. Thank you. Okay, next up, you're still there. Yes, I am. Um, next up is uh, to remind the board that the board is not here to decide uh, town meeting articles, and those are to be decided uh, by town meeting members. So the next, you now five or six items here. Um, I actually will apologize to Dr. Rabinovich. Uh, because I, I'm sorry, uh, it's a new calendar I'm using. <laughs> and uh, when I originally sent you that email, right, I, you were at the top, so you kind of f fell as I put things on. So if you, if you wouldn't mind, because I did promise that I wouldn't try not to keep you here too late, okay? Uh, so this should move fairly quickly, but Mr. Uh, Campina, uh, you're up for the discussion of the solo lease at the end of the town meeting article, okay? Uh, question, Mr. Tidebaum. No, I recall the earlier presentation, so I still have <coughs> fairly familiar with that. Thank you. Mr. Slavin. Just for reference, Guy, this whole piece is capped and basically sealed, so we don't have to have any issues with methane or anything else that line. Thank you, Guy. Mrs. Begley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I can't really remember all of the details of the presentation. I remember having this discussion before. Are there a butters to this uh, yeah, area? I believe there are butters, but there are butters to the, to the Well, my question is this. Um, what proximity would this proposed um, solar field have to the abutters? Line, 
Um, it, that's okay. I don't. I don't need any specifics. My question is this: I just don't know um, if um, should this pass. Is there any? Is there any? Does the town have any obligation to like notify a butters by certified mail, et cetera, et cetera? I'm not sure either. And I'm sure if, at this point, what we're looking for is permission from the uh, town meeting to move forward. We still have an RFQ to get out, and that still has to be vetted. So we have plenty of time to investigate the legal issues and notification that we may have to. Previous to getting the actual RFQ out, we get some responses and then we have to decide upon it. So these are good questions. I'd be more than happy to investigate them and talk to the council to make sure. So you, might wait, you might want to have some of those answers ready for town meeting. Is there a public hearing process? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm just, I know I'm asking a lot of questions, but I just don't know if there's a public hearing process for a Butters or... When I talked to the town council in preparing this, mm -hmm. that never came up, so I can't speak to him. Mm -hmm. I never specifically said to him, do I have to notify your Butters? So I really don't know the an answer, answer to that. The answer could very well be yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, it could be. I have no idea. But we'll definitely find out. It's a good you. question. I think it's uh, keep us on the right track, so thank yeah. you. Thanks. What, what's the number, uh, kilowatt? Uh, 1.5. Uh, we do 1.9 at the treatment plant meg megawatts, and we do approximately. I no, get no. The what's the number from the field? What do you mean? What would the field generate? 1.5 megawatts. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. So it's 1.5. So there's plenty of room. All right. Yes, there's right. room. Yes. Anything else on the uh, issue? Thank you very much, Mr. Campina. Thank you very oh, no, much. Well, hang on, in case there's anything else on the agenda for you. I was hoping that you could just. Well, uh, the any other sewer business. Um, was Mr. Judici coming this evening? No, he's not. We met yesterday. He's not on the agenda, but we met yesterday, and he's going to send you a letter to re ask permission to become on your agenda when it's your next available. So you should look for that this week, and he'll ask you to put him on the agenda. We I had a good meeting that. yesterday, and, and so I think we need to do this in front of the board now with the results that we did. So he's definitely agreed to write your letter and ask, could you please put him on the agenda? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Campino. You have a Thank great you. evening. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to number eight, town business. Um, do you want to go in this order, Mr. Chair? Shall uh, we take if I could, uh, if the, with the board's intelligence, I'd like to honor my uh, my word to the good doctor and get him out of here as early as possible before he throws me. I don't want him to hit me with a ruler. Dr. Rabinovich, Mr. in your committee, is here, I believe. Can, if uh, can the other members? Sure. The yeah, committee? that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. If they don't mind being on, well, if they don't mind being on TV, they're on TV every week anyway. <laughs> what difference does it make? Okay. Um, you have uh, Warren articles. Are you going to We do. There present? are three of them. You don't need a PowerPoint? You're all set? Nope. Just begin when you're ready. So the first article is Article 5. Um, a Additional State Education Aid, Chapter 70. So after town meeting, um, when the uh, budget was finally um, set by the state, um, there was an additional um, amount of money that was given towards Chapter 70. Um, in the explanation, I believe um, it was $125,000. But it's exact right off of the DESE website um, and on our cherry sheet. Um, it identifies the amount of money, and that money will be coming as Chapter 70 money to the town, and we are asking for that money to be added to our appropriation um, at town meeting. Okay. The precise amount is $120,053. You would know that. <laughs> is there any questions from the board? Is there any other comment from the other board members? Any comment? Uh, none. Mr. Slavin? Okay. Mrs. Begley? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Moving on to Article 2. Oh, well, Article, <laughs> Article six, 6, your second. Our okay. second, Article 6. The McKinney-Vento Homeless Student Transportation. As part of the uh, budget that was passed um, by the state, an additional $11 million was added to the budget to reimburse communities for the McKinney-Vento homeless student transportation. And the, um, 
What McKinney Vento is, is a federal law that requires school systems to transport homeless children back to the schools that they came from. So if a family lives in Brockton, and we actually have examples, and they get placed in um, a home here in Wareham by DCF or some other agency, then we have an obligation to, tran to transport that child back to Brockton. And it, there's a cost share. So half of the cost is paid by the town of Wareham, half by the town of Brockton. And we have been, um, there was uh, a- Excuse me one second, Doctor. Uh, it reminds me, uh, please uh, uh, put your cell phones on mute or vibrate. Or turn them off. Proceed, thank you. Thank you. And um, as part of the process, each one of the uh, communities that transport homeless children was asked to um, send to the state auditor the amount of money that it cost us. In fiscal 12, we spent $165,000 to transport um, homeless children. And when we have asked for the exact number that we will be getting back, what we have been told is that through our end of the year report, which we, it was due October 1st and it went out yesterday, um, that the state will look at the numbers of the claims. They will then audit to make sure that those claims are correct. And then, depending on all the claims, they will take that $11 million and spread it among the communities proportionally. So it could be an 80%, 90%, 75%. Um, that's what they do with Circuit Breaker um, every year. And we were told to expect approximately $125,000. And that's why um, there is no number in here. When we met with the um, town attorney, um, we were told not to put a number because that number could change. Um, but to be clear, the motion, of course, will have to have a number. And our intention is for that number to be 125. Uh, it is, in fact, possible that the $11.3 million that was appropriated by the legislature will, will be sufficient for a 100% reimbursement, which means that the town would have an additional approximately $40,000 coming to it, which would roll into free cash. So we think this is a very conservative amount, and it would be the difference between the school um, potentially deficit spending or not the 125, but the extra 40,000 you're welcome to. Wow, that's very generous of you. What can, I give you my, can I give you my account number? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else uh, from the school committee like to comment? Uh, Mr. Tidewell? Uh, no questions, thank you for that explanation, and I hope your prediction proves true, Mr. Sweat. Mr. Slavin? On the issue, uh, I think there's been some discussion with the town administrator, with DOR, et cetera, on the, this particular money. Since it's not a certified amount, I think there was some point of having to basically put that on hold, possibly for a special a town meeting, having a special town meeting in the spring, because if we go ahead and, and assign that money, we could have some financial impact to the town. I would defer to Mr. Sullivan for an explanation to the public. Mr. Sullivan? The the main the main thing is going to be whether Desi is going to certify your number before town meeting, which I think you're you're all well aware of. If they don't certify it, and we were vote that money out, we'd have an unbalanced budget on there, when we'd have a problem setting the tax rate. So that's my only concern on the whole amount. I understand you guys are uh, ahead of the pack in getting that number certified by Desi and getting that back. So. Um, knocking on wood that you have it before town meeting on there. But that would be really my concern on there. Um, if we don't have that number back, I would ask that it does wait till, till spring. We did get an email from the Department of Revenue stating that not just this community, but a lot of communities are concerned about this as to how to handle it. Um, so. we, Mr. Sweat. Thank you. I knew, I knew it was coming. <laughs> we completely appreciate your, your position. Um, you should understand our position, and that is um, we're 
um, operating in the belief that the 125,000 will be there for this fiscal year. It is up to town meeting to appropriate that money. If if the money was, if town meeting turned it down on August on October 22nd, we would have many months to deal with that to prevent deficit spending, which is our fiduciary responsibility. If it was turned down in late April, then the reality is that we'd have almost no chance to deal with that deficit and we'd be presenting a bill in October <laughs> um, for the deficit that we'd incurred that we knew was going to occur as a result of not getting that money. So we're in the somewhat awkward position and yet we appreciate the fact that you're in a somewhat awkward position. So we just want you to understand that that's where we are. Can the, uh, can the body vote to approve it subject to? Is that, is that something that's... You're asking a question beyond my um, right, legal I expertise. Ask, uh, probably, well, I figure people watching that are thinking that, so I would just ask it. That's uh, more an answer for the 22nd, I guess. Hopefully you'll have an answer before that. It's, it's a very fair question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Mrs. Begley? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have two questions, actually. Um, one is, what if it comes in less than 125? Our problem. What was it again? Uh, my question was... No, I, I heard the oh. question. What was the answer again? Our That's our problem. We have to operate, um, and we will know, of course, um, relatively soon, but we're, we're trying to operate as frugally as possible. We have reduced routes. Uh, we have increased occupancy. Um, we're trying to do everything possible to operate as frugally as possible. So if it came in l less, first of all, you should understand that, that the 160, I, my number was 167, whatever, approximately that number. Um, we've been told that it's possible we'll be fully funded. So we think we're being quite conservative at 125. So is it theoretically possible that it'll be less than 125? Yes, theoretically, but it's highly unlikely. I think if you had asked, if we were asking for 165, that would be a dead-on question that, that we would be uncomfortable answering. But that's precisely why we've chosen the 125, and, that's, and we are operating so that we can feel certain that that will not produce a deficit. That's the best answer I can give you. And I guess my other question, my other question is this: um, I, I understand what you're saying about operating in a deficit; that it's it's not it's it's not the responsible thing to do. However, that being said, um, the DOR has made a recommendation, so we can all be hopeful that um, Desi does certify the numbers because. It would be difficult to s to sell something that the DOR has recommended us not to do. But just kind of a, kind of an obs more of an observation than a question. The other the other reason you should feel a little more comfortable is because let's assume that the audit finds us some small problem. It's not going to be a forty thousand dollar problem, right. right? So even if they said it's not one sixty seven or one sixty five, that it's one forty five. We're only looking for 125. So we have built in a significant cushion, which not only pr gives safety to the to the schools, but also the town in this in this situation. There are there are incidents where it's good to be conservative. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, comments from the uh, other school committee members? Yeah. Okay, uh, Dr. Rabinovich, you want to move on to your next article? Your third, your number seven, your right. third. Our third no article, number seven, the Wareham High School gymnasium roof. Um, this um, actually um, is included two places. I believe uh, the money um, necessary to replace the gymnasium roof is included in an article from the capital planning and this is a question, I believe, for the um, town moderator. Um, but what we would hope would happen is that the capital planning article would come first, and therefore we would say no action necessary on this. Or, but in case, for whatever reason, that doesn't pass 
This is here as a safety valve. Um, we have um, a group of students coming to the school committee meeting tomorrow evening to present us with a petition as well as pictures about the water on the floor and the um, classes, the gym classes that have had to be canceled. Um, it is cause, it, things are getting worse and um, it needs to be addressed. So this is um, an insurance policy. Mr. Teiterbaum, any questions? None. Mr. Slavin? On the roof, this is actually just the roof only for the gymnasium, correct? This is gymnasium and con contiguous. The RFP will be written in a form that will have options so that it can come to this sum of money. In other words, we, we're, there's no way the, it's going to do the entire high school roof for that amount of money. No, I know that. Okay. So the locker rooms, for instance, which may be looked upon as a second piece, but it is contiguous, is also included in this. When we do the repair, that's going to go back to a rubber roof like the existing roof again? That, that, that is correct, except it will be welded down to the insulation and will not be put on as it was 23 years ago without being welded down and being held down by cinder blocks that <clears throat> eventually disintegrated. Thank you. After 23 years, it's soft rock, right? Mrs. Begley? No questions. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, uh, to clarify, um, in this in this article, I thought I saw the word repair. <laughs> I do see the word repair, and then I heard you say the word replace. Hey, to me, that's two different things. Uh, um, I would agree with you, um, but when we went to the town moderator and our legal um, advice of, for the town, they both said to put it this way, and so what's replacing the, it. It yeah, is actually, it is to replace it. To replace the gymnasium. Roof, roof. yes. Not a patch job. Not, no, a, not a patch job, no, to sir. To replace it. Yes. Yeah, uh, comments from the school committee? Anyone? Yeah. Sure. Um, and I know that this is, it, this is a debate and discussion for town meeting, um, but this is just something that's raw and new that, that just happened, is that this is not only a rant about um, our kids and canceling gym classes and, um, this is also about there have been many fundraising activities that citizens of Wareham, the PTAs, things like that have want to put on um, in our community um, and one particularly where they're trying to use that gymnasium to be able to sell out 600 people that now it's, it's up for uh, it might not happen and that is lost money. Um, again, just one other thing to add on to one of the reasons why there's, there's Kids are going to probably come and talk about a dozen. There's probably a hundred reasons why this has to get done, but I just thought that it was important to be said. Thank you. Mr. Flaherty, anything? Mr. Sweat? I just feel compelled to say the obvious. This is a very valuable town building, um, the, and the integrity is threatened, and we need to do something about it. Okay. Anything else? Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate it. And I hope I kept my word to get you out of here as soon as, as soon as I could. Thank you very much for the consideration. You're more than welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Shall we go back okay. to the order? Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, item A, under town um, 8A, is discussion with Open Space Committee. Are you a committee of one, Sandy? I've invited the rest of my committee, but <laughs> I hear. Um, number B, is that an outside person? Discussion, um, yes, I it's would, a presentation. I, would, I wouldn't mind waiting since I have to be here for D, so I, I have no problem if you don't mind switching. Do you mind going Richie, out of order? Fadi, how do you have to drive? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go next, I appreciate I that. Thank problem. you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Sandy. That's very kind. So then we're going to thank you. Thanks to Mrs. Slavin, we're going to move to item B, discussion of town meeting article on the SAGE solar project. Thank you. I'll leave it for Kara. Thank you. We have a thorough but, thorough but brief. This is kind of your, this is kind of your practice. Uh, 
Yeah, sure, go right ahead. Yeah, if we can get, uh, oh, Sandy's got it. So we can document for me so we can see. If you'd uh, go to the mic first, uh, and maybe I don't know if that reaches to where that computer is, but uh, if you want me to, uh, I'll be happy to hit the space bar for you to advance <laughs> that. Whatever, uh, uh, whatever works best. I think maybe yeah, I you need you need to make sure you're talking into that. Mic. Yeah. Uh, would you rather have me sit here then? We could, we, could, we could just stare at this picture. Mr. Mr. Sullivan <laughs> volunteered to hit the space bar for you. Thank you very much. Um, good evening. My name is uh, Richard Kleiman. I'm uh, with Sagestone LLC. We are uh, developers of renewable energy projects, uh, and we are uh, developing uh, over 30 megawatts of solar projects here in Massachusetts at this time. So uh, we... I've been personally sort of uh, working with a number of the town officials, department heads, uh, uh, Mr. Holmes and, and uh, Derek and others, uh, just discussing our proposal over the last six plus months. Um, and um, uh, Mr. Holmes and, and, and Derek were gracious enough to uh, invite me in and we've been talking with town council about a uh, potential agreement structure and, and that seems to have passed muster. and. and uh, and now we're on uh, on your town meeting agenda for uh, the coming town special town meeting. So, um, you, know, the, you know, the piece that just hit me in the head was uh, you had spoken to a lot of the school people as well, didn't you? And they yes. were all just sitting right yeah. there. We probably should have put you before them well, so they could have heard it at the same time. Well, I think they're they're at least somewhat familiar with it. So um, th that's fine. I mean, I've. Uh, I uh, had detailed discussions with Anna Miranda and uh, okay. Scott Palladino and, and, and Dr. Rabinovich has been apprised, I understand. Uh, spoken with Guy at length. I met him out at his facility and we talked at a good length okay. about it. I was first uh, kind of came in through uh, Peter Sanborn. He was just the first person I spoke to at CETA and then spoke with uh, Salvatore uh, Pena there as well. Um, so anyway, long story short, let's move on. But um, th this is... Uh, I'm going to sort of breeze through the first couple of slides and then get to the meat of it, which is really uh, the new revenue opportunity for the town. So uh, if we can go to the next slide, please, Derek. Thanks. So uh, I think I've already spoken a little bit about Sagestone. We're an international energy uh, development and investment advisory company. So we develop uh, projects ourselves, and we also advise others on investments in different types of energy projects. Uh, extensive experience uh, here in Massachusetts and elsewhere. Uh, I don't need to belabor that. Let's let's uh, uh, and, and be happy to uh, introduce you to my partners who are uh, have a lot more white hair than than I do at this point. <laughs> um, so we're developing a number of uh, utility scale solar projects uh, and wind projects here in Massachusetts. Um, our uh, first two projects are now in construction: uh, a solar project in East Bridgewater of uh, two point five megawatts and a uh, wind project in Gloucester of uh, four megawatts, uh, both the same exact type of model that we're talking about here. And then we have uh, agreements with uh, seven other communities and we're doing, we're sort of in an earlier stage of development on, on those projects right now. Um, this project that we're gonna be talking about tonight is not located in, in, in uh, town of Wareham, but um, is uh, because you're in the same, it's, it's actually located in the town of Plymouth but because you're in the same, uh, in the NSTAR service area and in the same what they call uh, ISO New England load zone, you're in southeastern Massachusetts, then uh, we can do what's called net metering and send send the credits to the town of Wareham's accounts. So that's, in other words, you're, you're qualified uh, to take the credits, which is a good thing. So uh, if we can go to the next one, I'll show you. This is just, uh, it's probably illegible at this, at this scale, but this is the project site in Plymouth. It's a five megawatt site. We actually have the capacity to do six megawatts there. Um, and we, we may in fact do that, but what we are trying to do is make sure we size the project that could accommodate uh, Guy's project as well. And, and we did, we used, you know, any excess capacity that the town had to dedicate toward, uh, toward this net metering project. So sort of optimizing your, your capacity to uh, use this this uh, state program that's a really a great uh, great opportunity many you know, I think over half the cities and towns in the Commonwealth are now taking advantage of this so if we could jump to the next one um, so it's a, a 25 year plus years these solar projects last into the 30 30 plus years so uh, you could keep extending the agreement as long as you want but initially uh, we'd, we'd like a 25 year commitment but we would have um, you're basically 
over time as the rates go up, uh, you, your benefit goes up. So you'll see in the numbers that it escalates over time with the rate because it's based on a percentage of whatever the, um, the current rates are at the time. And then there's a formula in the state's net metering tariff that those rates are based on. So it's not arbitrary. It's all set by the state. It's regulated. Uh, you get your piece and then uh, the rest would flow back to the project. And I'll show you exactly how that works in a, in a schematic form here in a minute. It also helps you, you know, advance your clean energy goals as a town. So it's a nice kind of uh, uh, green in both senses of the word, money and uh, and uh, environmental. <laughs> uh, here's the very simple version. Basically, if you look, start at the bottom, the solar project produces the power. Those are the kilowatt hours flowing up to the NSTAR. We plug them right into the NSTAR grid in Plymouth, uh, where where the project would be interconnected to the grid. The uh, power goes in there, but the um, because uh, the town of Wareham's uh, name would be on the meter in that case, and it's only power flowing out, um, the credits would come back to the town. So, and, and then you can see the money flows down. And the next uh, slide shows you in more detail how this works. Um, so if you can see the picture of the uh, solar array kind of in the lower right there and then you see a purple line uh, which says 100% power output going to the left to a new meter so that meter you would be what's called the host customer you would be it's kind of like if you sent uh, a kid off to school and um, that kid moved into an apartment and you as the parent were um, you had your name on their telephone bill or their electric bill then the account would be in your name but the uh, kid is living in the apartment and using the service. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the analogy. Um, anyway, the, uh, the power flows through the meter and the net metering credits, uh, which are really in the form of ca uh, cash, they, they're dollar denominated, they go back to the town and you identify on a thing called a Schedule Z, which is just a form uh, that we fill out and uh, we identify which accounts and how much goes to each account. And each month as the project produces power, uh, that dollar denominated credit appears on your bill and you do not pay that part of your bill. So it's new revenue or new savings to the town. Uh, and then what happens is under the agreement, uh, the town keeps a portion of that and the residual uh, goes back to the project to pay down the debt and, and uh, operate the project, et cetera. And so um, that's, that's uh, sort of a net, it's called a net metering credit purchase agreement or a power purchase agreement. You may have, may have heard these terms thrown around. But that's what that, that does. And basically, the town takes on no, no liability for developing the project, for owning or operating the project. Uh, it's not even in the town. So there's no, no abutter issues, no, no concerns I from, would just, from neighbors. Uh, I would just, yeah. as you're going through, I'll just yeah. critique a little bit. I remember that we're going to be in an auditorium, right, high school yeah. auditorium. Yeah. So um, it, there's a fairly large screen there, but you might want to try to. If you want people to understand this one, you might need to just kind of space it out a little bit. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think you're right. Just, this is kind just of remember that here is different. Than yeah, this might be a little too much information. Uh, and we yeah. can we can uh, simplify it a bit. Okay. So uh, that's a good point. If you don't mind that critique, not at all. This will be your first time. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, and the next slide, we're definitely not going to want to use because nobody's going to oh. want to read that. <laughs> but I, I just included you that. You can explain this. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, essentially what I just explained, only in words. But uh, what it does is, uh, over the course of that agreement, uh, you know, our, our, the projection would be over $6 million in new revenue to the town, which is really the bottom line. And if, if you go to the, sort of the next slide, it... it Gives a little bit. Well, that's, that's <laughs> you're not going to be able to read that one, definitely. Uh, that. But if you look in your handout, you'll see. Uh, I'll ex sort of explain how that works. So if I, yeah. Was this based on the numbers that uh, you got from Mr. Kudish? Yes, uh, in, in part. Um, so Mr. Kudish basically gave me the total expenditures uh, during the last FY12 for right. for electricity that the town had. It's over a million dollars. It's a million thirty-five thousand. Uh, to be more precise, and that includes both your NSTAR bills and your uh, competitive energy supply through Suez and Glacial. Um, so it's a lot of money that the town spends on electricity. Um, what we're saying is, as much of that, uh, you know, as you know, if, if guy, let's assume that the the uh, that guy's solar project goes ahead there, 
um, whatever's left uh, we would we would like to apply these credits to and so we think we can do approximately five megawatts uh, maybe maybe it's four and a half but we can we can uh, double check that against guy's numbers at the appropriate time yeah he uh, I asked him that uh, are you here yeah he yeah. said about 1.5 right, right. And we can as a town we can use up to what is it is it nine well it, it's it's an interesting question because you really have to look at the dollar amount that's why I wanted to talk to uh, to Brian about the dollars that you spend on electricity because um, the town's using electricity at different rates, uh, different rates on each bill. Street lights have one rate, and the schools have a different rate, et cetera. Um, so the only, and, and then we're producing power at, a, at what's called the net metering rate, which is a, a different rate again. So we're producing these credits, and the only way for, uh, for them to be sort of reconciled was to turn them into dollars, and that, so you get a common unit to compare. So what the, what the regulations tell you to do is, um, uh, the credits appear on the bill in dollars. So the number of kilowatt hours we produce from the solar project multiplied by the net metering rate is the number of dollars in credit that would appear on the town's bills. And then we would allocate that to the various bills because you, you have, I forget how many, but a lot of different NSTAR bills. Um, so that that's the idea. And, and Guy, would be, his project would be doing virtually the same thing as I understand it. Um, so uh, that's that's the opportunity, and um, we're we're uh, kind of excited to be working with the town. Frankly, this is um, uh, a great project. That the good part about the Plymouth project is it's already permitted. We went through the the permitting project uh, permitting process with the town, and we're fully permitted there. Uh, we are going through the last parts of the uh, interconnection process with NSTAR right now. That's usually the longest time thing but uh, we're, we're getting close yeah. um, yeah. Rich, so. what I would suggest is yeah. um, if you could take um, at least this page yep. right um, and, and some of those other things that were real busy and tight but you wanted to make those points just pull them out yeah. yeah as you heard me uh, announce earlier Mrs. Smith the moderator uh, will accept packets okay so if you take some of the, especially that the page on what William can you know when it's specific to that stuff that you you yeah. and Mr. Kudish worked on. Yeah, um, I I think that's worth printing out you know a few hundred copies and handing them out the door so people can sit there at their seats and see what the money is. Sure. Yeah, I think so, uh, uh, that's what, that's the bottom line basically. Right. Is it's going to save you money and and you really don't have to do a lot of heavy lifting. Basically, uh, as the credits come in, uh, they appear in your account. Uh, you keep a, a percentage and you write us a check every month for the residual. And, and so I wanted to make you aware that you could produce a, a, a short handout. It doesn't have yeah. to be a full packet. but yeah. um, And then sh we just need to have that, uh, she said, seven days prior. So okay. whenever you can get that, get it into Derek. Because she's she, you, you meet with yeah. the town moderator quite a bit now, don't you, on the town meeting? Yes. So if you get it to Derek, then you're sure she's going to get it. Yeah, get it to me. No, <laughs> I'll definitely that's why. That's why I, I've kind of you. farmed you off, not to be disrespectful, but not, not at I've all. tried to yeah. help you as much as I could. But these no. are the guys that make it happen. That's perfect. And I'll, what I'll try and do is, I think I'll just condense it to a one pager, and then uh, I'll I'll speak to that at briefly, and if there are any questions, we'll answer them. Sure, yeah. uh, Mr. Titerbaum. No questions. Thank you for your Thank presentation. You. Thank you, Mr. Slavin. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Sixteen and seventeen. There's two pieces to it. I had, I, had, yeah. I had 16 and 17. 18 was the uh, wastewater plant. Oh, okay. No, no. Oh, oh. No, 16 is separate. Yeah, it's, it's two separate articles. Yeah, it's yeah. two separate companies. Okay. So his, yours would be 17. As of today. As uh, of Mr. Slavin, question. As of Tom. today. May I ask, are you, uh, are you planning to do 16 as well, or how is this? Uh, <laughs> 16 is related to a wind project, I guess. Yeah, no, you're not here to address that. No. Oh, okay. No. So. No. No. Do you have a question yes, on the presentation, sorry. Yeah. sir? You mentioned very quickly there was something about uh, residual and a check. Yes. Uh, what I was saying was that uh, the town gets a percentage of the net, the value of the net metering credits mm -hmm. that they that it keeps. And, and that's what's in that calculation in the table on the end is how much the town's share is. So it's it's 10% in the first five years and 20% thereafter. And then as the rate goes up, 
that steps up. So what it works out to be is a, a around $92,000 the first year and going up to 377000 in the out years uh, over the time. And that, if you add that, that stream of payments together, you get over six, $6. $6.2 million, basically. And that's that's the sort of value to the town. I guess. Okay, I just was bringing up because the way you said it at the end there, you said the ch town would issue a check. I want to make sure that it wasn't misunderstood. No, it, you you would only it's pay when paid. So you you're getting you're getting the credits on your account. You're getting 100 percent of the credits on your account because that's the way the rules require. We we have to allocate 100 percent of the credits to a municipality or a public entity. Uh, those. Those come on your account, and you're effectively keeping 20% of the value, and then after they appear on your bill, you write, there'll be a, an invoice from us for 80% of the value, and, and then. I just think you just want to want to make it very clear and simple. Town yeah. meeting gets a little uh, boisterous. Yeah. So the idea is to use the KISS principle. Yeah, sure, yeah, I got you. And yeah. uh, net metering for most people is a foreign thing, so if yeah. there's some way to do very simple diagram of net metering, it'll make it a lot easier for you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I can also. Uh, do I would that. suggest if if I'm not out of place, that you may want to speak to Plymouth. I think the town administrator, Melissa, their their project is all set and vetted, and they're very happy with what's going to happen. Yes, yes. I yeah. think it might help you as well. Terrific. Thank yeah. you. Okay, Mrs. Begley. Uh, one more. It just I don't know why I'm having difficulty with this. It's simple math. We're only counting to, to ten, maybe, right? <laughs> but yet. Is the total project in Plymouth five megawatts, or is five megawatts what you're proposing that Wayham could sh could could um, capture? What what we we've proposed in Plymouth is a six megawatt project, but we, after looking at your your bills, uh, we believe that what you can absorb is around five megawatts worth of net metering credits from us, partly because Guy's project's going to use some of it. So right. I, I think that's part of it. Um, so, so what's the total project in Plymouth? Is it like 12? <laughs> what are you producing? No, it's six megawatts. We oh, it's six. Six so total. Plymouth has taken one? Uh, Plymouth is interested in taking one, <laughs> and we haven't, uh, we haven't sealed a deal with Plymouth. Um, there's another town that's also interested in taking right. More than one, if 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 you decide to take, you know, less than oh, five right. or something like that. <laughs> I still haven't got an answer on what the limit is. Do you know what the limit is for municipalities yeah. that we could take? I don't know off the top is of my head. I had heard eight, but you can know. do uh, you can do up to ten megawatts of net metering, but that translates into a different. You have to have that amount of um, charges on your electric bills. Right. So you're you're really capped by well, how we, much. If we could get more, we could sell it to somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> if you if you want to use more electricity just to I'm get the just credits. Thinking of revenue. That's <laughs> yeah. a, I'm only yeah. I'm only concerned yeah. with yeah. Yeah. That's, I got it. Yeah. Okay. I so, think I got it. Uh, so hopefully with guys that one and a half and you know five. <laughs> right. That gets us to six and a half. And we use you use, uh, you, like I it? said, you, you're over a million dollars. So yeah. uh, depending on, we'd have to look more closely at what guy expects to produce in dollars. That, that we had hundreds. But I think that's enough. I got lost in the conversation when Mr. Pudis said hundreds of meters. I thought it was done differently for the town, but. It, he, he's right. You have a lot of accounts. And most towns do, but you, you, know, you probably have an average or above average number of accounts with NSTAR, yeah. Right. And the, and the cal oh, and then one last question, I'll let you go. Um, this calculation, does that, that include, did he give you the usage for the schools? I don't think I ever got an answer. Yes. That uh, includes the school. Right, okay. and, and so uh, when you look at this calculation, you'll see um, sort of the one, two, three, fourth column over on the top, you'll see a number that says 928,000. And that's that's at the current rates in our estimate on production for a five megawatt project. That's how many. That's the sort of total volume, total value, annual value of the net metering credits that the solar project would produce. So that that leaves some headroom for another, you know, a solar project at, at the uh, sewer plant or uh, whatever. But if for some reason, let's just say something goes wrong with the project at the sewer plant. Um, 
there's some kind of groundswell of opposition and you know the town decides not to proceed with that we could absorb the extra into this project as long as you don't sell it to somebody else in the meantime right? well right yeah but um well, you know good. depends how how things turn out i guess if you want to optimize you you would get more money then from from this yeah and uh, and again um thank you very much uh, yeah. i think this is this is a great uh project um and in the meantime today's the second so we got short time right um so we've got to deal with with the moderator i would by the 22nd, so I would kind of set my goals with her for like around the 12th. We can get it all done by the end of next week. I mean, I think you have everything put together. Terrific, um, yeah. You can work with Mr. Sullivan. He can get you, hook you up with Claire. And it's too bad it, if she had made it tonight, I would have introduced you so you know who you're dealing with. Okay, right. yeah. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan, took it. Mr. Sullivan. The one thing we do have pre-town meeting on Thursday, so I don't know if you want to email me anything out, and I'll uh, I'll be put happy the copies to. out there at pre-town meeting as well. So get do some they, of the people. Do they discuss the articles there? or They can't. Yeah, we. Okay. Oh. Yeah. This Thursday of this week. Questions or debate? Well, maybe if you're around Thursday, can you go to that Thursday or? Yeah, I would welcome them to be huh. up there to well, speak. Well, you can work with Derek on that. <laughs> okay. Maybe and enough, maybe get a second chance to do your presentation. Yeah. I'll All do right, a, I'll do a shorter one then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Thank Rich. you for your time. Right. Appreciate thank you it. For, thank you for all your work. I mean, I know it's been a, a lot on your part. I know. I very much appreciate the town's interest, and we're, yeah. we're very excited to work with you. Thanks. Great. There's some thank extra you. copies here if anybody wants them. But, uh, Should someone make, could they just take them from the table, Mr. Chair? Yeah, she can leave them right there on that corner where those agendas are. I'm just going to keep one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, back to Sandy. Only if you turn the lights all the way up. Oop. What happened there? Thank you. <laughs> Discussion with Open Space Committee. Good evening, Sandy Slavin, Chair of the Open Space Committee. Which article is this, Sandy? Good evening. There is no article. This okay. is not on, I've, this is some information. The um, Open Space Committee, uh, Nanette Bergeron, and uh, has done a guide to walking trails in Wareham, and I believe it's in your packet. This, this, well, only the way anyway this is online in the Wareham town website under Minot Forest Committee and under open space and I'm here to let the people out there know that this exists it is a great walking tour it talks about places where in town and in neighboring towns where you can go biking walking we're talking in Marion in Rochester in Carver, in Mattapoisett, et cetera. But in the back of it, you will find maps of the various town-owned properties, including longitude and latitudes, if, you want, if you're so desired to work that way. So it talks about things like the Agawam River Trail, the Birch Island Conservation, Great Nick Conservation. It shows where the trails exist it has some information, some directions to get there if you don't, if you aren't so inclined to know longitude and latitudes, etc. This is also being used by the Wareham Land Trust to go out to people who um, join their organization. That's the last page of the document. But I just wanted to let the general public know that this does exist um, on our town websites. Are oh, you, you got a nice one there. Well. That's because I well, I don't know you do, you people don't have colored printers in That's uh, town nice hall. Colored yes, everything. We have nothing. You know, maybe, uh, that should be moved to the, maybe that should be moved to the front page of the web of the website. So, so people if people don't see it on no. the front. They have to go trying to dig far. How would they find that mine at Forest? Is there any way Matt could put that on the front on on the town Mr. of Wareham? Where what web page? Put that, that right on the front. I'm sure we can ask Matt to move it. Mr. Sullivan yeah. can deal with that. 
Yeah, believe it or not, we did have the one day I was leaving, a gentleman came in looking for something exactly like that, and uh, that, that's great. So I will speak so, to Mr. Underhill. Yeah, because right now you'd have to go dig an undermine forest or dig an under open space to find it. So maybe if you can put it up front. Is that uh, also uh, is that also like out at the information center? And do they have those at the no, information center no. through CETA? No. This is just something that's online. I honestly, the open space committee doesn't have the funds to color print ah. the document. Ah. So that's why it's available online. Now, the Cape Cod uh, Canal is working on the, the chambers, are working on the big centennial stuff and all these Understand. things. Yes. And I mean, this so should be a document. Yep. This should be a document that's available uh, electronically to all these people. You're going to have a, a lot of visitors in town, and it would be great if they knew where this well, was. Well, keep in mind, we also already have a Mine Up Forest map that's available online, available at the library. It was at the Visitor Center on 195 that does the same thing that shows the maps within. But this is for all of our walking trails in Wareham and local towns. So I just wanted to let people know it's available. Yeah. The yeah, no, I think that, uh, you know, that, that raises a good point because... Uh, you know, I do a lot of this two or three day stuff, and the first thing I do is find the name of the town. I go on the internet, and it'll tell you hotels, walking trails, uh, you know, whatever, sporting events, right? And, and you go on our website, you never find that unless you knew where it was, right? Golf courses, well, I didn't want to say that, but that's always the first thing I look for. Then the second thing's a hotel. <laughs> but as long as I can play golf, I, I could sleep in the clubhouse. Uh, comments, Mr. Uh, Tidebaugh. Thank you for taking the time to compile this. This is a, a wonderful guide to a, a lot of our public resources. It and I hope that people, yep. yeah, I know. I remember how it difficult it was done, just to. It was all done by Nanette. I mean, it just that she did this for the open space and Wareham uh, Land Trust. So it was something above and beyond the work she's done in the next project I wanted to bring forward to the committee. Great. Well, I interrupted please, please convey our thanks to Nanette for, yep. for doing this. Mrs. Slavin, Thank you want to talk to Mrs. Slavin? No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Begley. This is great. Now, are you going to have this just on the website? Did I miss that part? Are you yeah. going to have it in place of business or? Right now, we have no mechanism of getting it printed and distributed. Right now, it's only on the website. Okay. How many pages is that? On the on the. Maybe we have, maybe we have a local printer who might want to donate some uh, materials uh, to take the chance to donate this little booklet. Hold it up so people can see it. Oh, it's go. called a guide to walking trails. Yeah, it's a him. small guide. Look at that. Yep. If it's on if it's on the internet, people can just download the PDF right onto their phones and their little walking tools. You got I, it, and they go off. People walking, don't print that stuff just, off uh, anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, seventy uh, degrees on by forty one, and well, you know, I was thinking about you know how they have like little free papers when you go into some of the breakfast places. That might be a, you know, for tourists. Not this time of year. I'm, I'm thinking. But more. I mean, it's great. I mean, that's what we that's what we did with the mine at Forest. We put that brochure out, and that was funded with CPA funds. But because there is no, we can't use CPA funds to do this. Maybe we can ask AD Makepeace. I think I'll do that. Or someone. I, what, there are in ways. The, there are, when there are plenty they of have those programs, those um, civic programs in the spring, maybe the I will put this on my agenda to speak to them about publishing this for us so we can get it out there in hard copy. Oh, those, the grants that they give? Yes. A good idea. Yeah. Well, you might want to talk to Cedar as well. Uh, you know, they might have uh, some opinions. Okay. If I yeah. just may okay. interrupt one quick second, um, 8.31 and um, Selkman Winslow has returned to the meeting. Welcome back. <laughs> now, next. I'm in sorry? Next, my next topic. I had several I wanted to, to bring forward. Oh, before I know you do that, though, I want to I want to ask you a question. Oh, okay. Is that okay? Yes. Because right, I didn't get to ask you a question. Okay. Uh, how was your experience in dealing with the office in getting on this agenda once you sent the email? Which time did I? Which well, time? Well, uh, the time. <laughs> The time, the time that I told you we had the calendar set up, and I asked you to send the email. 
I was fine. It was fine. Was it you were responded to within 36 hours, I believe? I don't remember, hours, but maybe. it was um, once I got your notice that um, I was on the agenda, I got a reminder saying I wanted they wanted the stuff a week before y your packet, and I was two days late in delivering it to you. That's okay. But, um, yes, and I know this time of the year it's very difficult since everything is being focused toward town meeting, but I wanted to get this information out because the next topic... Absolutely. If, if, I mean, if you could, you know, we can, if you could do something at town meeting in the foyer on this too, that would be great. Well, again, it takes printing oh, and that cost printing. and, yeah. <laughs> well, you only need to have one and hold it up. Okay. The next, next, the next thing is that it, we have a 2010 and 2017 town of Wareham open space and recreation plan. This was approved uh, by the Board of Selectmen in 2010 and valid in 2017. And it's been approved and accepted by the state and that was a big step for the Open Space Committee. But on it, in it, is various goals and um, our goals that we as an open space want to achieve. One of the goals which I put in your packet is for expanding and improving recreation facilities. So I want, I shared with you um, our goals stated in here, but I also included in your packet an updated CPA regulations. And it allows us, the town of Wareham with town meeting approval to spend CPA funds to, re to rehabilitate playgrounds, including the uh, replacement of equipment and other capital improvements to the land of the facilities thereon, which make, which make up the land relative to the facility. Anyway, we can use CPA funds to update our playgrounds. In the past, the land had to have been purchased with CPA funds. That's no longer the case. So we now have available CPA funding to upgrade, upgrade our a recreational playgrounds and that's why I showed you the goal set by the open space committee to do that and what I would like to do is ask if it was our right with the Board of Selectmen if we as the open space committee start working on CPA grant request to work on various playgrounds I know we need to have FinCom and BOS approval as we submit the grants, but I wanted to get a feeling from the board as to whether or not they would support those grants as they came forward. In, and if that was the case, I would then work with Mr. Underhill to do a survey on the Wareham website to find out which one of our dozen or so playgrounds they would like us to um, work on first. Mr. Tiderbaum? Uh, I, I think that's a great idea. and. Uh, I'm glad the legislature has finally acted and allowed municipalities uh, to, to use funds, CPA funds, uh, in, in a more liberal manner uh, so that we're not just bound to, to the, the, the very strict three purposes that we had before of just acquiring lands for this, that, or the other purpose. Uh, and I think going forward, it's going to be a good opportunity for us to actually put these monies into action to improve uh, our recreational facilities, our forests, and, and any number of town-owned properties uh, that unfortunately we haven't had the money to, to really do much with. And uh, going forward, we probably won't have money from other sources to really address. So thank you. Mr. Slavin? Careful. <laughs> You'll be sleeping in the golf course. <laughs> Obviously, everything is, is, is okay, what you're asking for. The only thing is if you want, you know, the board's approval, I think that has to come as a request to the board. We, we can't do it at this time. No, I'm just, I'm just looking for a consensus as whether or not you feel it's a good idea. Then when we have a grant request, we will come for you for a specific one. But I didn't want to do all the work developing a grant request and not had a feeling that it was... You know, right, you guys aren't home now. You guys aren't home. That's <laughs> 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 we got it. Your husband's a little slow sometimes. We know. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Winslow. How? I'm sorry. I just threw that out at you just since you came in. I Thank figured you. you were listening to it on your phone. No. <laughs> you weren't? No. 
Um, how did you intend to, I mean, I think many of the playgrounds are in serious disrepair. Yep. I mean, I know. No, no Dicus not is, the Dicus. How? So what, how will we determine the priority of? What I would, may I? I would, I would like to work with Mr. Underhill and put out a survey asking the general public, well, do you think that Indian Mound or the Oakdale or Hathaway or Ellis needs the first priority and let the community decide which ones they want? Example, the one at, on Carver Street, it has a pathway down to the water if you don't mind going down gullies. It's impossible to walk to it, so that would have to be improved. A great water access, and we can't get to it because it's so unsafe. Uh, the one on Oakdale, it's the end of Apple Street, which is, it, it ends, and then it, there's a uh, paper street right to the water. Great access for boating right on the Agawam, so it would be that type of thing, but I'll leave it up to the community as to which one. Here's a list of the town-owned playgrounds, not school, property but town-owned play playgrounds and ask them to prioritize which one we focus on first. Can I make a suggestion? I think you're going to need to do that in conjunction with the, the building department or the municipal maintenance department because some of the playgrounds are not even safe. Oh, we know that. So <sighs> I, I would rather get a list, a combined list of the community's feelings and the ones that are most structurally unsound. Oh, we know that horrible um, building on Hathaway. Oh, I, I wouldn't even think about anybody sitting on it to have a picnic when there's more holes in it than there are in the sides. I mean, yes, I will definitely, in conjunction with what the town wants, work with maintenance on this as to, because they are maintaining every one of these by cutting the grass. So they can't, they're not doing anything to the actual playgrounds, but they're going out there at least cutting the grass. So I know maintenance is already working on these facilities in that capacity. So yes, Mr. Gifford, I could easily work with him okay. to say next, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Begley. Thanks, Sandy. And I really appreciate seeing that um, change in legislation in such a timely way. Oh, yes. Because that's something that um, I remember when um, we had the issue with the schools and Newton said you couldn't do it and then CPA rules were changed. Well, it was just last year that we had the whole thing over at the auditorium about what the CPC could do and could yes. not do yep. and that kind of thing. So, yep. And that was a huge question yes. about how they identified or defined recreation. Yes. But you're right. I mean, some of these playgrounds um, do need attention. We've, people won't go to the playgrounds because they're in such bad shape. Well, the one that's near us isn't too, too bad, and it's constantly in use, the one in Onset. Oh, yes, It's constantly in use, right. I mean, who's to say maybe I can add Hammond to my list, but I guess that depends on what happens. But uh, yeah. it's possible that we can, but there's, there's, there's definitely the one in the backyard. Does anybody know what its name is? No. What is it? It's Sylvester. And that, that playground back there, again, all the r ground is eroded underneath the equipment, making it unsafe so that um, it's this, I have a long list and I will work with Matt to get it online. Thanks. Because I'm feeling I got support from the board that it's a project that I'd like to work on. And That's I great. know we're, I right. know Just the Suns is coming up, so we have to get home for the 10 o'clock show. Just one, uh, one question. Um, the committee that was put together uh, through the appointing authority, there's a Pox and Playgrounds group. Have you had any discussions with them? I They'd don't know. I can't find where they meet. They're, uh, they're online saying as posted, and I can't find any. Um, yeah. I mean, I know, I'd be happy to work with everything, she, everybody in that can do it. But I know that they appointed members of that. Maybe we can, maybe we, well, next time you see Clay, you can if ask. You see Wasn't the Jimmy appointments. Franklin, when you were on the Westfield Committee, didn't he say he yeah, was on that? But you find that their dates are, yeah, they I ended in 2011, they ended in 2012, so I don't know who the new members are. Yeah. But yes, I know that that committee exists. All right, outstanding work. Thank you very much. Okay. Next up. Thank you. Uh, next up, Mr. Chair, we have any other town business not reasonably anticipated? No, 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 I no. got, I'm um, sorry, D. Oh. D. Delta. Oh, three CPC articles. I'm staying. Ah. <laughs> we get, uh, oh, no, we have enough chairs. Oh, I thought, yeah. There's three here. Very good. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. 
Good evening, everyone. Angela Dunn. Uh, again, uh, it would be uh, your Article uh, 19. Well, in this paper, anyway, the first one you're presenting. We have one of, we have three. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Angela Dunham, Chair, Sandy Slavin is our Treasurer, and Sherby Worthen is our Clerk. The first one is uh, to see if the town will vote to transfer com from Community Preservation Fund FY 2013 estimated annual revenues the sum of $10,400 for the Community Preservation Fund Administrative Reserve and $369,602 for the FY 2013 Budgeted Reserve or to do or act in any manner relative thereto. This is a CPC housekeeping or bookkeeping article simply to inform the public of where their taxpayers' money is going. Uh, Mr. Teiterbaum, any questions? No question. I'm aware of... Uh annual, semi-annual nature of these articles. Mrs. Slavin? No. Mrs. Begley? Nothing, thank you. Mrs. Winslow? No. Anything else from the committee would like to add? Okay, moving on to the next article. Okay. Your second. Article 2 for CPC. To see if the town will vote to appropriate from the Community Preservation Fund, FY 2013 estimated revenues, or any other monies available in the Community Preservation Fund, under the category of historic preservation, the sum of $50,000 for the preservation and restoration of old town offices, including the replacement of an historically accurate cupola at 505 Main Street, Center Park, Wareham. I have a little bit of historic background here, briefly. The town office building, now known as Old Town Hall, was built in 1902, served until the present Memorial Town Hall opened in 1939 at 54 Marion Road. The first town hall built in 1866 was on High Street. The selectmen had voted to spend up to $1,000 to construct the building. That would serve as a meeting place, hold a safe for town records, and include jail cells. <laughs> this facility served until 1902 when the old town hall was constructed. The restoration and repair of the exterior will ensure the building's preservation as well as its historic value. The old town hall restoration project is included in the historical preservation strategy, which is to provide protection, preservation, rehabilitation, or restoration of town-owned properties of historic and or cultural importance. In addition, the town of Wareham's master plan under section eight states, the town should identify and protect significant historical and archeological resources. The old town hall has been included in our local historical inventory done by the Wareham Historical Commission and therefore should be preserved. So the article is asking for $50,000. We do not anticipate that it will cost that and as in any other CPC project, unused monies reverts back to CPC fund. Mr. Teitelbaum. No questions, thank you. Mr. Slave. The project will deal with any lead issues or anything else as it, part of your contingencies? It, it does, thank you for bringing that up. It does include mitigation of the lead issues and the painting, and it will be painted white. We'll keep, every, we'll keep everything as it is because yes. as everybody knows, I believe WCTV's contract with the building ends in 2015, and they've already made it known that they would like to move elsewhere. Yes. Thank you. Windows will not be replaced. Um, they will be reglazed, folks. There will not be any replacement of windows. Mrs. Begley. Nothing, thank you. Mrs. Winslow. Why aren't you replacing the windows? Why are we not? Hmm. Because it is, um, it is recommended by CPC that we reglaze rather than replace. It's old They're glass. They're not, sorry? Is it old glass? Hmm. That's my understanding. That's all. Anything else from the committee you'd like to add on that article? No? Okay, next. Our last article, to see if the town will vote to rescind Article 49 from spring 2010 town meeting, which appropriated the sum of $255,000 from the Community Preservation Fund FY 2011 estimated annual revenues under the category of open space for the acquisition of the northern portion of the parcel of land now or formerly owned by 
BKT Realty Trust, 2C Enterprises Incorporated, Assessor's Map 117, Lot 1005A. This property was not purchased. Therefore, the article that was passed previously to fund it is invalid. Mr. Teitelbaum? So again, just Mr. because... Mr. Teitelbaum? Thank Sorry, you. I kind of... I heard you. Got back on my elbow there for a second. <laughs> so this is uh, another housekeeping article. It is. Thank you. Mr. Slavin? All set. Mrs. Begley? Thank you, Mr. Chair. This was voted to purchase this property in 2010, and it was never purchased? Correct. Do you know why? I do not. I, I don't have that information, perhaps, Mrs. Do you Mrs. know, Slavin? Sandy? Uh, oh, Sherby? Yeah. I think she does. Well, Sherby. it was a bankruptcy yes. situation. Oh, so the, it, it wasn't that CPC backed out. It, they were unable no. to go forward. Right. And we have a letter from the Nature Conservancy. That's okay. Yeah. You were just unable to go forward. It wasn't just that. It just, no. you know. Right. I understand. How much acreage was, do you remember? It was Listen. 180 acres. How 110 much? 110 plus. 110, 110 plus. Plus yes. acres. Wow. Thank you. Mrs. Winslow? I don't have any questions. Any other comments from the uh, board? Members? I would like to tell you that FinCom has endorsed that article for Old Town Hall. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, is there anything else that you'd oh. like to add? Uh, while you're here. Okay, I'm, I'm changing I hats. Got, I got a few minutes, so take, take it while you get it. I'm going to change hats. I now have my Minot Forest hat. Uh, thank you. Oh, now, wait a minute. No, don't, don't go off the reservation. Not for discussion, for information. No. Oh, I'll t we'll, we'll accept that. Because okay. you didn't come up during citizens' participation. I, I know. Sorry. Just to tell you that machinery is on site. I, I don't know if you felt the earth moving this morning. <laughs> I heard, briefly heard, uh, what sounded like the testing of large saws. Yes, you should get a stamp. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. You too. Next up. Okay, now we are on any other town business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of the meeting, and I do believe that it has to be of an urgent nature. Mr. Uh, Tadabon? No say? urgent items. Mr. Slavin? Nothing. Mrs. Begley? Nothing. Mrs. Winslow? Nothing. Uh, we took care of the, uh, the wedding. I think that was, uh, that was it. Mr. Chair, just it's not an urgent nature because we um, the date of the no, memorandum, but I'm asking, um, and I guess the office could send you the email because that's where we got them from. From it was a 53G account release. Did you get it in your packet? It's it's so it's in it, your packet, but right, it's gonna. It's nothing that we have to discuss or deliberate or vote on. It just should probably, as soon as possible, agenda. It'll have to go on <coughs> the next agenda for us to vote on those. Mm -hmm. okay. Town Administrator's report. Mr. Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, what I'm handing out here is sort of broadening what we heard about during citizens participation. This is the license for the, the building commissioner, David R. Moore, including on second page, uh, showing that his license status is active and just double and triple checking all that. As of today, I have brought him on board on a temporary nature to be our, uh, our inspector of buildings. We need that because of our bylaws. Uh, I believe it's section 14, was it 21 on there? That states that the build, inspector of buildings shall be the zoning enforcement officer. Building commissioner on there. Without him, uh, you'll see that there would be there's some unhappy residents. We need to get this taken care of. Bring him on board. Uh, the cost and the timeline would be I'd figure roughly about eight weeks altogether on him. During that time, we can post for the new position and hopefully get a qualified candidate in here. If it does take longer, that's something we'd have to review. But this is taking a large burden off the community right now. 
Mr. Chairman. <laughs> and just go around. Oh. Or do you want to start first? Or I, I want to I wanna go first. Okay. You what? <laughs> I want to go first. Oh, you do? Well, go I ahead. Do. Mr. Teiterbaum, don't speak, don't speak automatically. Go ahead. Mr. Sullivan, I missed citizens' participation because I had to take my daughter to the doctor, but can you tell me, are we adding a position? No. We haven't filled the... Uh, may to bring you up to speed, um, there's a list of zoning issues. The local building inspector... Um, can be made a zoning officer for the town. However, our local inspector is qualified for the job he does. He does not have zoning, he does not have the credentials. And I think the last thing we need is uh, another unqualified person signing off on these. There's a list of about 12 matters, I believe of 14 matters before zoning that need to be signed off by a zoning officer for the town. And so this is, is really a vendor situation, part-time, to keep that list clean so that when residents come in and there's a, a zoning issue, someone will deal with it and they don't have to wait. So when Mr. Sullivan refers to a posting, that's for somebody who works on an as-needed basis? That, that posting would be to fill the position that was re recently vacated in the inspections department. Okay. You're going to fill the director of inspectional services. I'd like to post for that because this position's only taking uh, can only be there for a short period of time. This is just a temporary until we can get a full-time employee. Okay, so now this is where my confusion comes in. We hire a director of inspectional services. We don't have one. We're going to hire a director of inspectional a full-time position. We just hired a local building inspector. There's enough work in that office to support two positions. <laughs> this, uh, the, the besides the credentials, but right now the gentleman that's in there is coming in at six in the morning to handle the business he has on there. We are overstretched in there. Well, I'm I'm just making sure because you know we all hear about how building permits are down and all this other stuff and. Okay. okay. Well, we might as well just continue the, the awkward circle. This is bedroom. It's not an awkward circle. <laughs> but go, are we going counterclockwise now? If you go alphabetically, I'm C, I go first. Just for clarification, Mr. Sullivan, this is that um, both positions are credentialed in a different manner. Yes. So you brought in someone as, as a temporary service until we can fill the position. Correct. Now, is the and the current building inspector was hired at a full time basis as well. The local building inspector is full time. Is full time, but our other um, are part time. Is that right? We have plumbing. alternate plumbing and gas yes, and um, electric electric inspectors. Yes. So, so the only full time positions for um, are the director of inspectional services and the local building inspector. And then there's a uh, there's a clerical staff yes. member. In there. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Oh. Uh, I'm what, Mr. Slater. The uh, person we've hired is just coming in on an as needed basis, a couple times a week to get the backlog done. Um, just so we have the information, Article 14, Administration, on our zoning bylaws, Section 1421, Zoning Enforcement Officer. The issue is basically that. A building inspector um, has to also have five other certificates in order to qualify as a building commissioner or an inspection inspector of buildings. Our current person is only qualified in three but can't take the other two. So right now he can't deal with anything that has to do with zoning. And that's what the issue has been. We had the gentleman here earlier who was complaining that he's been looking at things since August, but had no way to do anything. So this is basically, again, zoning enforcement officer, which as by our bylaw, the inspector of buildings shall be the zoning enforcement officer. He shall not approve applications of any kind or plans or specifications or intended uses, which are not in conformity in all respects with this bylaw. The enforcement power includes enforcement of Article 16, Site Plan Review. It's just as a position that 
as we were constituted, we can't take care of, so we had to come up with some solution, or else we'd sit there with all these zoning issues just sitting, and we could end up with serious problems. Mr. Teiterbaum. Uh, just to amplify a little bit uh, on the, the remarks uh, that uh, my colleagues have made, uh, under the Mass General Laws, there are two qualifications, certifications, if you will, for building inspectors. One is a local inspector. You've got to have experience in the field for X amount of years. You have to pass a state exam. This entitles the local inspector to sign off on residential building permits and very small scale commercial projects. For any larger commercial projects, uh, you have to have a superior qualifications. Uh, some call it a commissioner of buildings. Some call it an inspector of buildings. Uh, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same exams. Uh, and to become qualified in that, you have to take the exams that Mr. Slavin was referring to. Typically in a municipality, your director of inspectional services holds the building commissioner or the inspector of building certification. And so they can take care of not only uh, the local zoning inspection requirements that only that qualification can, can do under our charter, but they can also uh, review and uh, inspect and approve plans for larger scale commercial uh, development. So, I mean, it would be wonderful if while we have this gentleman here, we had a bunch of uh, large commercial people step up to the <coughs> plate and, and take advantage of his presence. I don't know if there's any impending, but that's also something else that this uh, part-time individual could also do while he's in the office. It was a full-time. Pardon? But we're posting for a full-time. Position. Oh, eventually, yes, because uh, but it, it, my understanding is, is this individual now is being brought in on a part-time basis just to handle right, the existing right. backlog. Uh, but eventually, uh, yeah, you're going to need a full-time director of inspectional services with the commissioner of buildings qualification. Okay, now that all the all the nuts in town and troublemakers are going wild, uh, let's just let's just bring the facts to the table. The person. The young man, uh, Mr. White, I believe his name is, right, that was just hired is a local inspector. He is qualified to do his job because I already see it going crazy. Why are we going to hire somebody who's not qualified again? That's not true. So stop that. That's why all this, I should have stopped this conversation long ago because it's already in a frenzy. Um, and Mr. Sullivan is not hiring a employee, you're hiring a vendor Correct. to deal with these matters. Yes. yes. Correct? Correct. So there's no part time employee, there's no temporary employee. This is a vendor he's paying to clean up the zoning list. I think there's about fourteen items and then, you know, as things come in. But he's not an employee of the town, a vendor. That would be the thing. That's very important no. to be clear on Thank that. Thank you for that clarification. Whole, yeah, it's a big difference. Mr. Continue. You have anything else in your report? Uh, there's the this board had asked me before on Union Pond as to whether they had satisfied uh, the sewer mitigation. I believe you'd all received a email from Mr. John Charbonneau that he and his staff had worked on, and uh, it looks like that has been satisfied to the tune of over a hundred thousand dollars. So that was. And then thank the, you for that. You're welcome. And then the final one was, uh, this is actually a, uh, I'd received a letter from, from Chief Stanley about some of his officers on a, uh, a recent action, if I can speak to that. It was just, it's pretty impressive on there. Go um, right ahead. It's your um, report. Thank you. On Wednesday, September 26, a call for an unresponsive female had come to the police station. Uh, communications officer Johnson provided the caller with EMD instructions until the officers responded. Wareham PD officers Paul Summers and Michael Finney responded to a scene where it was determined that the woman was not breathing and had no pulse. Our officers, Finney and Summers, used CPR and AED techniques to, on the woman until EMS staff had arrived. While EMS was transporting her to Toby Hospital, they detected a pulse. At Toby Hospital, she was treated and then she was med flighted to Boston. 
she, she is alive today and doing well thanks to the efforts of our first responders. Outstanding work, yeah. Well, that's, that's worth a uh, outstanding work. I'll leave on a high note there. <laughs> oh, good. Um, and I'll go first <laughs> if I can. Uh, you know, today's the second of October, right? Yes. And um, um, you know that coming up on the second uh, nine sixteen sixteen on the twenty third, um, you or your accountant will be presenting to the board um, a report. I understand that um, in talking to a member of the finance committee that you've actually put together a report that was very easy to understand and uh, not too complicated to go through. Is that true? It was one of your reports that the finance committee referred to. Yes, from the, from the past that has one of those reports. If you could send a copy of that report to the board members mm -hmm. um, so that we can have a look at it. And then, um, as long as the board is satisfied with that report, I understand it's very easy to go through. It's got a nice flow to it. Uh, if the board is satisfied with that report, then that's the report that we'll use on the third week of the month. Does that work for you? That works. For and I know that guy's nervous. He doesn't like to speak in public. So listen, if you if the board's comfortable, if you have specific, the accountant's not going to know every single ticket that went through his office. But if the board is comfortable, he could come. And the presentation could be done by the two of them. He gets very, he seems to get very nervous in public, and that's okay. Does that work for the board to look at that report? And if you have any comments, send them to Mr. Sullivan. Uh, but I understand it's a good report. Any other c questions, Mrs. Winslow, for Mr. Uh, Sullivan? I don't have any questions. Mrs. Begley, Mr. Teitelbaum. No, thank you for your report, Mr. Uh, Slavin. Okay, next up. Liaison reports. Which way is start? No, Mrs. Mrs. Winslow. <laughs> no, she wants to go first. That's okay. Go ahead. Um, I don't really have anything other than the recycling committee will be coming before us about their budget transfer. Uh, they've we've talked at length about this. I met at one of their meetings over the summer to discuss the uh, town meeting warrant article. The situation uh, with their funding is is serious and the, the recycling facility will not remain open for the remainder of the year. I know I've, Mr. Sullivan was supposed to be working with them too. I'm not sure how successful that's been but that seems to be the big concern with them. I have made the funds available. If there's going to be a transfer, I've set aside from available funds for that to be there. That's, um, I oh don't good. know what else they would, they haven't asked anything else of me, so. Great. So that's it. Mrs. Begley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, before I do that, Two people during the meeting sent me announcements. If the board would indulge, do you mind if I mention them? Sent you announcements? Sent me announcements for upcoming events. Is that all right? It's one. It's just one's just an elaboration of the Boys and Girls Club event. Go right ahead. Thank you. Um, the Boys and Girls um, Indoor Flea Market vendors are wanted. Um, it's its first indoor flea market on Saturday, October 13th from 9 to 2. Um, the club's tables will include new items of interest to crafters and scrapbookers, spaces for rent for individuals, nonprofits, and for-profits who might like to sell some of their items, and the rental fee is $15. Um, present and former club members' families may rent a space for $10. Setup time is from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and call Barbara, Barbara Sullivan at 508-295-5400 or download vendor application at www, these small phones, wbgcnewbedford.org um, and click on Wareham Unit. And the other um, is the Kiwanis Club is holding an Oktoberfest few students from Music of the Bay will be kicking it all off. <laughs> I may even sing a couple times. This is from Michelle Bolin. Um, and it is 
on the 4th of October and starts at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Buzzards Bay Tavern. Entertainment and cash bar um, and a 15-minute informational video. Thank you for your indulgence. And the Board of um, Health meets tomorrow, um, Wednesday at 4 p.m. And the bike path is going to have, I think Salpina is coming. That's what yes. Dave Smith told me. And that's at 5.30 p.m. in room 23 in across at Town Hall. Thank you. Uh, let's see what we got today. We have a FinCard meeting will be tomorrow. There'll be discussion on more articles. Again, it's open to the public. If anybody's looking for detailed information, it's a good place to go. Room 225 Multi-Service Center. Uh, Wareham Historic Commission is meeting upstairs, room 23, I believe it is, or I think it's 23 upstairs tomorrow, same time, 6.30. As everybody knows, we had the Captain Kendrick Day through the Historical Society, which was about 50 people showed up, uh, and it was a nice event. We also uh, went to the Howitch on the 29th, and they also had about 50 to 60 people with a, a, mil a militia as well. And I think the only other thing we had is Community Events Committee. We probably need to come to have them talk to us again. There's still some open issue as far as the parking kiosk, I think we need to get that resolved because there was there's some, an issue that needs to be resolved. So I'd, I'd ask that that goes back on the agenda sometime. As a voting member at that committee, there was there was discussion on stuff. Mr. Uh, Teiterbaum? Uh, I have no liaising to report. Outstanding. Okay. Mr. Chairman, do you have a li liaison report? Oh, thanks for asking. Uh, In your mic, please. Uh, no, I'm just trying to think. We have the Council on Aging Wednesday. Um, and Mr. Sullivan has dealt with, uh, well, he began today to dealt with the issues of zoning because obviously we had that list of about, I don't know, it's 12 or 14 uh, requests. Uh, so that will help uh, solve the rumor mill that we're out signing these things without any qualified person. Uh, that's about it, I think. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Five zero zero. Thank you very much.